Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. Hey guys, so today we've got a special episode where I'm actually addressing the YouTube comment section. I know, I know, I'm insane for doing this. So it has come to my attention that some people do not agree with my interpretation of how Late to the Second was actually able to become a worm, and I'm going to basically explain why I think I am... 100% correct in my interpretation, and so here we go. Now, I say in this video that it is due to his Bene Gesserit abilities that he is able to undergo the transformation into the Worm God Emperor. There were several comments on this video with upvotes saying that I was wrong about this. I'm going to explain why I'm not wrong about this. First, we have to talk about what are the Bene Gesserit abilities. So, the Bene Gesserit abilities include very precise control of internal body chemistry. They can convert chemicals within their bodies to other substances. They can choose the sex of their offspring. They can remove diseases from their own bodies. The Bene Gesserit have these abilities due to Prana Bindu training, which they get from the time they're very young. Now, once a Bene Gesserit sister undergoes the spice agony, her full abilities are awakened. She has access to her ancestral memories, and this wellspring of wisdom and knowledge essentially aids her in everything that she does. She has that much more wisdom and knowledge about how to control her own internal body chemistry. So now I'm going to read a comment that has several upvotes telling me that I'm wrong about my interpretation of what actually happens in Children of Dune. Leto II didn't manipulate his body chemistry when he put on the sand drought skin. He was so saturated with spice at that point the sand trout didn't recognize the water in his body anymore and reacted as though he were a worm, more or less. So, thank you for your comment. And I've actually gone into quite some detail about several of the things that you mentioned here in this comment. But we're going to focus on what you said about Leto did not manipulate his body chemistry when he put on the sand trout skin. And that he was so saturated with spice at this point that the sand trout just recognized, just didn't recognize the water in his body and reacted as though he were a worm, more or less. That is incorrect. But I understand how people are making this mistake in reading Children of Dune. We'll start just by analyzing the quote, the moment in Children of Dune when Leto II first puts on the sand trout skin and breaking down exactly what it means. He felt the sand trout becoming thin, covering more and more of his hand. No sand trout had ever before encountered a hand such as this one, one every cell super saturated with spice. Now this is where people are getting this home because he was saturated with spice that that's why the sand trout were able to do this. I actually think that Frank Herbert was just pointing this out because if you read the next line over, it says, no other human had ever before lived and reasoned in such a condition. Delicately, Leto adjusted his enzyme balance, drawing on the illuminated sureness he gained in spice trance. Now, what does that mean? He's adjusting his enzyme balance. That is a Bene Gesserit ability, clearly. And he says, drawing on the illuminated sureness he gained during the spice trance. And that is clearly a reference to the Bene Gesserit ability of other memory that is unlocked when a Reverend Mother goes through the spice agony. He goes on to say, the knowledge from those uncounted lifetimes which blended themselves within him provided the certainty through which he chose the precise adjustments, staving off the death from an overdose which would engulf him if he relaxed his watchfulness for only a heartbeat. And at the same time he blended himself with the sand trout, feeding on it, feeding it, learning it. Now you can see here that Leto II is manipulating his own body chemistry and adjusting himself so that the sand trout are able to blend with him. To me, this description sounds like exceptional Bene Gesserit skill. We spend a good chunk of this book as well seeing the Lady Jessica train Faradin in the Bene Gesserit way, and so much of this crosses over. Now, you could say that it is not per se his Bene Gesserit abilities that are giving him this 
knowledge and ability, but the fact that he is a Kwisatz Haderach. But honestly, I don't think that makes very much a difference, seeing that the Kwisatz Haderach is a product of Bene Gesserit design. Now, of course, the Bene Gesserit ultimately realized that they could not control the Kwisatz Haderach, but that doesn't change the fact that they did invent the Kwisatz Haderach. Both Kwisatz Haderachs, Paul and Leto, are born from a Bene Gesserit bloodline. So to me, there really isn't much of a distinction to be made there. Kwisatz Haderach abilities are technically Bene Gesserit abilities. The Kwisatz Haderach is essentially a more powerful Bene Gesserit. The most powerful Bene Gesserit. In fact, Leto II in God Emperor of Dune even compares himself to the Bene Gesserit and says that they are the most like him in all the universe. You cannot separate Kwisatz Haderach abilities from Bene Gesserit abilities, in my opinion. And there are multiple examples in this same chapter of Leto clearly drawing on Bene Gesserit techniques still. And here's an example. He fell into the Prana Bindu forced relaxation, gathering his senses into a pool of consciousness. Now, if you've read Dune, you know Prana Bindu is what the Bene Gesserit call their very specific kind of meditative training. This focused the inward ripples of the constant now through which he experienced time, and he allowed the vision elation to warm him. The membrane worked precisely as the vision had predicted. So this is a very clear reference, not even a reference, it's an outright statement of the fact that he is going into a Bene Gesserit Prana Bindu trance to achieve this. And then in the same chapter we have with a terrible singleness of concentration, he achieved the union of his new skin with his body, preventing rejection. No corner of his attention was left to dwell upon the terrifying consequences of what he did there. So again, he is concentrating in the Bene Gesserit way, manipulating his internal body chemistry to achieve this connection with the Sand Trout. So, based on all of this, I do think my original interpretation still stands. Leto II was, in fact, saturated with spice, but that wasn't the key reason he was able to put on the Sand Trout skin. The fact that Leto II was pre-born gave him insight into the fact that the Golden Path existed, and he was able to go forward with it by unlocking his genetic memory and the Bene Gesserit way and gaining access to all of that hidden knowledge. So for me, that's pretty clear. Let me know what you guys think of that in the comment section below. Peace out, guys. So we've got some great news, guys. Quinn's Ideas officially has a Discord. Now, my goal is to make this Discord a great place for all science fiction fans to come and talk about science fiction, share their favorite books, share their love of science fiction stories and concepts while having a lot of fun. I'm really excited about this new way to engage with my community and to create more connectivity between my viewers. I hope you will join us over on Discord. Thank you so much. Just a heads up for those of you that may be interested, my next graphic novel, The Lie Behind the Star, is launching February 2023. You can sign up now to get on the email mailing list to get notified as soon as it launches. More information on my website, link in the description. Thank you guys so much.